35 years ago today, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas as he toured the Lone Star State in an effort to shore up his reelection bid. And even though it's long been thought that a lone gunman was to blame, there are a whole lot of people who still believe that that murder was part of a larger conspiracy. Joining us this morning is author Harrison Edward Livingstone, the author of the newly released book, High Treason. Mr. Livingstone, welcome. Uh, thank you. Good morning. You have done four books on this subject. Why do you and so many other Americans care so much about what happened? Well, I think all of us who uh, were alive when John Kennedy was president cared very much for him and what happened to him. It was clear to us at the time that there was a conspiracy. Hmm. Uh, now, quote, you say basically in the book, quote, all the evidence in the case was faked. We must now suspend our disbelief and approach the case from an entirely different direction. That's a pretty broad statement to make. Yes, until uh, I got into it, no one questioned the authenticity of the official evidence. Last year, Gerald Ford admitted that he changed the language of the Warren Report and, and altered the medical evidence of a bullet six inches down on John Kennedy's back. Uh, now we have criminal evidence having been presented just last week uh, by George Lardner in the Washington Post and Deb Reitman on the AP. Uh, this flows from a secret investigation uh, of the claims that I'm making in my writing on that medical evidence. And we have now got a case that can go before a grand jury. Now, let us break this down for people just a mm -hmm. bit here. You suggest, or you say in your book, that the autopsy reports, the photographs, were faked, and that the doctors who did it, who looked at those, look at those photographs today and say, that's not the person we looked at. That's right. The photographer who took the photographs of the body uh, told the Assassination Records Review Board that the photographs of the brain and evidence are simply not John Kennedy's brain, and they're not his pictures. The woman who processed the photographs at Anacostia at the naval base there uh, told the board in her depositions at the end of, of my book that the photographs of the body in the National Archives are not the pictures that she processed and developed. Um, this is very strong evidence of criminality and a faked um, trail in the case when you couple it with the fact that uh, the uh, bullet wounds have moved a number of inches both on the back and on the head. They moved four inches up higher on the head. This was to make plausible shot from that uh, sixth floor window. Now, I think we're looking at a copy of the, the uh, famous, uh, I guess as you would probably think now, infamous <coughs> Zapruder film, which was filmed by a dressmaker at the time who, who, who actually filmed the assassination. He wants, or his family wants, millions of dollars from the U.S. government for this film. You say that the film's a fake. Well, yes, there are scenes in the film that uh, we do not see in other uh, films of the murder. Uh, there, uh, Clint Hill testified that he put Jacqueline in the back seat and put, her arms he put his arms around her and placed her there. And you do see this in another film, but it doesn't happen in the Zapruder film. So how, how would it be possible to fake something like this? Well, they removed, uh, let's say they moved, removed every other frame in places uh, because the cart did stop during the shooting, and you don't see it in the film, it's quite clear that a large segment of the film was removed after the uh, three motorcycle uh, policemen appear, and then, the, the, then you see the limousine all of a sudden. We studied in the National Archives in January and February all copies of the film, and it's quite, quite clear that there are no overexposed frames at that point, therefore, there was a large piece of the film that's been removed from it. Well, why would anyone go to so much trouble to create a conspiracy <clears throat> like this? I think that's probably the big question for those mm -hmm. who, who might be skeptical, quite frankly. Uh, at the time of the murder, um, everyone in the country pretty much suspected that either Lyndon Johnson or the people surrounding him uh, were responsible for that murder. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover was one of the most sinister people in our history and I believe that he was responsible for other murders, uh, including that of Martin Luther King. Um, the key thing here is that uh, there was a powerful group in Dallas and Fort Worth uh, who greatly feared John Kennedy. They knew he was going to be reelected, and they had invested their oil profits very heavily in the um, defense industry that they were building up in Dallas and Fort Worth. Kennedy's uh, withdrawal from Vietnam triggered his death. Hmm. So you believe that this, the conspiracy, the conspiracists in Dallas and in, in Texas in general are the ones that ordered that murder, really? You're, you're suggesting that? Yes, they all uh, conspired together. They were all related. Uh, the mayor of Dallas, his brother was the deputy director of the CIA who was 
fired by John Kennedy, uh, along with Alan Dulles, and Alan Dulles ended up on the Warren Commission, <laughs> it, it, which was composed of Kennedy's political enemies to a large extent. Now, you know the problem with this, I, I think, from just looking in from the outside, is that so many people would have to be in on something like this and be prepared to continue to lie about it for decades and decades. Why would mm -hmm. they bother? That's been the common uh, complaint about conspiracy theories, but when you have in any city a close-knit group of powerful people who basically conspire to control that city and its economy and society, as you did in Dallas, uh, they were in a position to, to make this happen. Um, the shooters even were more or less in the family. It was one large extended family, uh, very um, uh, brutal people. They were right-wing extremists. Uh, they would kill people to get an oil lease. They would do anything, basically, to, to attain their ends. Was Jack Ruby, the man who killed the uh, assassin, the person we uh, believe killed Kennedy, was he in on it? Uh, I don't believe that he had foreknowledge of the assassination, but he certainly was ordered to kill Lee Harvey Oswald. We know that because he called the police station the night before and tried to, uh, he asked the dispatcher to change the um, transfer route. He didn't give his name, but the dispatcher knew him and knew that that's who, whom he was speaking with. Hmm. And so he was in on it as well. well. What do you feel, how do you feel now about Kennedy buffs, the people who have spent the last 30 years, last three decades looking into this uh, on their own and making, becoming some sort of obsessive about it? Yeah, Derek, uh, it's very unfortunate that we would be known as buffs. Um, the Warren Report was a mere theory. I deal in hard evidence. The people that work with me are scientists, doctors, physicists, mathematicians, and so on. Um, the, the Warren Report was a theory. Uh, we are coming forward and the Assassination Records Review Board um, depositions and interviews and reports by their staff uh, constitute criminal evidence in this case. So you want to, you, what do you want very quickly? Uh, this case must go before a grand jury uh, at once if possible uh, because the witnesses are getting older and uh, are dying. It's critically important that we uh, get them to tell the truth and some people are going to have to be indicted as a means of getting that uh, truth out. We can't have violence and assassination as, as a political instrument in All this right. nation. Mr. Livingstone, we got to go, but I want to thank you. Fascinating evidence and interesting conversation. The book is called High Treason, The Assassination of JS JFK and the Case for Conspiracy. Again, Harrison Edward Livingstone, thank you much. We appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Bye-bye. The Assassination Records Review Board has completed its investigation into the 1963 assassination of John F. Kennedy. Later today, its report will be turned over to the White House and the agency will go out of business. NBC's Pete Williams has more. The report says nearly 30 years of official secrecy surrounding the Kennedy assassination has led many Americans to suspect that their government had something to hide. But for the past six years, a small group of scholars has used unprecedented power to dig up and release nearly 60,000 government documents. I do think we can now say to the American public like, that the government is not hiding files on the assassination of President Kennedy anymore. Congress set the scholars to work in 1992, responding to public suspicion stirred up by Oliver Stone's movie, JFK, brimming with conspiracy theories. The review board pushed federal agencies to take previously censored documents and release complete versions, like this memo tracking Lee Harvey Oswald, the presumed assassin. The board traced FBI files on Oswald back to 1959 when he tried to defect to the Soviet Union. The board also persuaded the FBI to begin analysis on a tiny bullet fragment found in the Kennedy limousine, an examination first recommended by congressional investigators 20 years ago, but never done. And the board uncovered new evidence that Attorney General Robert Kennedy was involved in a plan to overthrow Fidel Castro. But researchers who have studied the new document say there's more proof than ever that it was Oswald on his own who shot President Kennedy in Dallas. It's clear that Lee Harvey Oswald fired all the shots in Dealey Plaza that wounded Governor Conley and killed President Kennedy. And then in fleeing the scene, he killed a Dallas police officer, J.D. Tippett. Even so, all these new documents have not changed any minds among those who believe in one of America's most deeply held conspiracy theories. The photo photographic evidence, ballistics evidence, medical evidence indicates that uh, more than one person had to be firing at President Kennedy. The new report only documents the secrets newly disclosed. It does not take sides on what this evidence means.
Review board members say they hope the lasting result of their work will be renewed public confidence in the government's commitment to the truth. For today, Pete Williams, NBC News, Washington. And here to discuss these latest findings are two men who have written books on the Kennedy assassination. Gerald Posner doesn't believe in a conspiracy theory, while Harrison Livingston says he still thinks more than one gun gunman killed John F. Kennedy. Gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Kate. Good morning, Let Kate. me start with you, if I could, uh, Gerald. Basically, this, this review board confirms what you've been saying all along. It, it, well, it confirms it in this sense, Katie. There's nothing in here. Four million pages of documents in the end that were previously secret. People are looking for the smoking gun. Where is it? You know, is there evidence the mob was involved? Was the CIA involved? Instead, what it does is it's important for what it doesn't show. It doesn't show any mob involvement. It doesn't show Oswald having any link to the CIA. It's also important for what it does show. It shows exactly what I said five years ago in my book, that the FBI and the CIA had a massive cover-up, not of an assassination, but trying to cover up their own bureaucratic reputations. And in so doing, they didn't serve the Warren Commission correctly, nor serve history, and they laid the groundwork for a lot of conspiracy speculation. So you agree, obviously, with the findings of the Warren Commission, but you understand why many people did not trust the way they did business. Absolutely. Not only did they do it in secret, they held secret hearings. They issued a report at the end. They didn't give any of the underlying information, but they made significant mistakes. They had the shooting sequence wrong at Dealey Plaza. They didn't aggressively look at Jack Ruby's mob connections. And now we found out years later that they were lied to by the agencies who were supposed to be doing the investigative work. No wonder people didn't trust them. But when you reinvestigate the case, you find out for all those shortcomings, they did in fact come to the right conclusion, Oswald alone. All right, Mr. Livingston, let me bring you into this. Do you think this conclusion that's been drawn by this board, does it, it blow a hole in your conspiracy theory at all? Uh, Katie, I regret that uh, Joe Posner completely misstated the facts. The board did not draw any conclusions. That was not in their mandate. Uh, the papers that were collected uh, are mostly well known, but they were redacted to protect sources and methods and pri privacy of individuals. What the board did that was stunning was to re-interview the doctors and then go down the chain of evidence in the autopsy evidence and give us this raw material, which they did on July 31st. These new interviews and depositions show conclusively that the autopsy was faked and that the photography is false and that the official pictures in the archives, as stated by George Larder in the Washington Post on the 2nd of August, are false pictures. The woman who processed them at the Naval uh, Processing Center in Anacostia has stated that the official pictures uh, in the archives uh, were not the pictures that she developed and they're completely different from the ones that she worked with. Uh, Gerald Posner has never done his homework in this case. He doesn't understand the evidence and what Mr. Lazar said is quite correct that all of the ballistic and medical evidence as the doctors tried to tell the Warren Commission, tried to tell the House of Select Committee on Assassination, does not coincide with these photographs uh, and x-rays. You know, Katie, here's what's interesting about this. Five years ago, I presented a book in which I said Oswald did it alone, and I gave you the evidence as to why it's right, including the autopsy x-rays and photos and all the evidence. What people like Livingston do is very interesting. Once they saw that, they said, oh, God, you know, gee, maybe that's right. So as a result, we have an answer. Guess what? All that evidence is faked. The Zapruder film, the home movie, the assassination is faked. You can ask him that. That's what mm -hmm. he thinks. The autopsy photographs are faked. They've been tested every way to Sunday, and they're real. And what he just said is absolutely false about what the review board has given. What it actually shows is that Bobby Kennedy and the Kennedy family were there the night of the autopsy on the 17th floor of the building at Bethesda. They were pushing the autopsy doctors to finish this work as fast as they could. And they were petrified that the autopsy doctors would discover in their examination of the body that President Kennedy had Addison's disease, which is a potentially fatal disease, and they would make that public. And as a result, they hid things up in the autopsy. The autopsy is terrible. It was boxed up. As a result of the Kennedy family pushing it along, we now understand better ever than why. But the statements that these materials are false is just completely wrong. He can say it all the way to Sunday, but it's not going to make it true. I regret that uh, Mr. Posner has not read the documents that were released by I have, in fact, the read them. First. I have the entire they, box they, of material on please, it. Please, I listen to you. Now, those uh, interviews and depositions quoted by both the Associated Press, uh, the photographer who took the pictures says that the photographs of the brain are not his pictures. Uh, the uh, photographs of the body are stated by the person who developed them not to be 
uh, the pictures that she developed, all of the doctors, all of the medical witnesses have insisted that the wounds are not in the correct place. Do you think the, the, the I was going to ask you, Mr. Livingston, do you think the Zapruder film is faked as well? That, uh, Katie, that film is the biggest hoax of our lifetime. Uh, it's unfortunate, Mr. Posner, who is speaking for about 5% of the people that have studied this case in the public, uh, who accept the official story, which Gerald Ford himself uh, uh, discounted last year when he admitted uh, to the board that the uh, bullet wound in the back has been moved some six inches and he changed the language of the report in order to have that bullet uh, come out President Kennedy's throat uh, having come down from that sixth floor window and strike John Connolly. The most important point here, uh, Katie, is that Oswald didn't shoot President Kennedy. There was a large ambush around that car and this conspiracy came from uh, right-wing forces in Texas uh, that we're looking at today. They have sought to control the political uh, future of this nation. Okay. And the key to it is in this medical evidence. And the truth is that this board has given this nation the biggest story of our lifetime because it re-interviewed the medical witnesses, and that evidence is quite conclusive. You find it in my new book at, on page 403. Okay, okay gentlemen, <laughs> enough promoting your books. Obviously, the, the findings or, or the material exposed by this review board will not placate a lot of conspiracy theorists like Mr. Livingston. I agree with that, Katie, but nothing's going to placate them. You're never going to convince the Oliver Stones of the world or the Livingstons of the world that, in fact, there's an answer to this case. We may never come to a consensus on this as a nation, but I do think that reasonable thinking people who want to approach this case and look at the credible evidence can realize what likely happened in Dallas 35 years ago, that one person for his own motivation killed the president. All right, we're out of time. Gerald Posner, Harrison, Livingston, you all can talk about this amongst yourself, as they say, yourselves. Thanks so much for joining us. It's 721. We'll be back in a moment. But first, this is today.